What's happening, Diecast Collectors? This is OBB, the Diecast News Guy, and welcome everybody to another classic NASCAR Diecast review. And you guys enjoyed my last one, which was on the Ken Schrader uh, 2002 M&M's Pontiac Grand Prix for MB2 Motorsports. And I decided to do another one of these Team Caliber reviews because, dude, the quality of these things are just absolutely amazing. And I kind of forgot I did pick this car up uh, when I was at the uh, Goodyear 400 for the uh, Darlington race. Um, for for the cup series and also for the xfinity series but this is uh, a die cast i i must say it is pretty nostalgic i know my good buddy die cast Jose is gonna absolutely love this because he's a i'm assuming he's a big fan of this guy because you know we're good buds after all but today it's gonna be on jeff not jeb i meant jeff burden's 2001 uh sicko super guard uh for tourists for roush racing Holy Christ, guys, the, the pure nostalgia this car has. But uh, the Team Caliber Owners Elite 164, as you guys know, I'm a big fan of these because it has, you know, the rubber tires, the metal chassis, and fully detailed inside and out, guys. Like, the deck lid opens, the hood opens. I mean, that's the main reason why I think you guys like this. I mean, that's probably, I guess you could say, that's what's so satisfying about these reviews. But I'm going to go ahead and shut up and zip my lips because I want to go ahead and unbox this bad boy and let's take a close look at the Jeff Burden 2001 Sicko Superguard car. And alrighty guys, we got this diecast album's box, and with every owner's elite diecast that we get from Team Caliper, we also do get a certificate of authenticity, because that just shows you just how much detail and quality control that they just put out into these products. And man, let me tell you what, man, just everyone Team Caliper and uh, the former CEO of Randy Duncan, I mean wherever they are now i mean good lord these guys absolutely just deserve all the credit that they can because my god this is this is more than just uh when people want to say 164 die diecast or toy models yeah bullshit man this is a diecast replica made with quality and heck it is just freaking beautiful so heck that kind of defeats that argument right there so you know decided to go ahead and say it because you know heck the, the, you know people like that are always gonna be hating no matter what <laughs> but today this is a diecast that i must say guys growing up as you know a nascar fan from 2000 2001 and more and and um you know throughout these throughout these last two decades um this is one i absolutely do remember especially playing you know nascar thunder 2002 i think or um yeah 2002 or 2003 i remember this car and i was like my lord guys um jeff burden of course uh, this was the sponsor uh sitco that uh, you know was famous from the, the, the from the number 21 wood brothers car from kyle petty and of course uh michael waltrip as well which by the way that'll give you a little indication what the side tech comparison is going to be because um you know i do got a nice little one to show you guys just show you guys how good quality this car is i mean just even the paint quality guys the details and the windshield the interior i mean look at this this is just absolutely beautiful but of course the best part the hood opens man and we got sponsors underneath the hood look at that engine detail guys that engine detail is is even more detailed than what you get on probably the the current 124 next gen cars that just shows you just look at those pieces man look at that oh it's so beautiful and you can see right there we do got you know some uh the nice uh classic ford taurus uh uh headlights right there and of course the uh even the uh, even the where the um where the front grills are you can see they're even textured um that's really nice it has like a nice matte finish to it but yeah the sicko sponsorship man let me tell you what i mean this is just one of these cars that's just i don't know it's just so nostalgic from the 2000s i hope one of these days if sicko returns in nascar i mean um I will love to see them like do a throwback on this car, guys, because Jeff Burton actually had some quite good success in this car, guys, coming in uh, what like um, what we're reviewing his 2001 car. But um, yeah, Jeff Burton actually did score like what like two wins in this car and actually winning the Coca Cola 600 in that year, um, which was really cool. I think he also won the uh, the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the uh, the second Phoenix race as well, um, if I'm not mistaken. If they had two Phoenix races, I don't think so. So he probably only won that uh, one Phoenix race. Um, as you guys know, the NASCAR schedule has kind of changed, but, um, yeah, winning the Coke 600 and the Phoenix race, um, I guess you say, I guess you say it was a, it was a quite of a good year for, uh, Jeff Burden, but I think that's when he started kind of falling off because he, he was big in the nineties, man. I mean, but Hey, you know, Jeff Burden, you know, he's just one of those guys that, you know, I mean, never got close to winning a championship, but you know, you could probably put him in the same mark as like Mark Barden and Carl Edwards. So it's just great guys who were consistent. He got 21 cup wins and, um, I guess you could say, you know, he he's, you know, he's had a good career in NASCAR. And, of course, you know, he's done a decent job being an NBC analyst. I mean, when he first came on, I was pretty annoyed because, you know, I'm sure Jeff Burton's like a really cool guy in person. But just when he commentates, just don't you ever get, guys, I, I got used to him now. But, like, I don't know, he just has, like, a very raspy voice where just, I don't know, like, you just get a headache every time you hear him. It's just like, good Lord. <laughs> I feel like I need to pop some ibuprofen every time I hear Jeff Burton, you know, just uh, commentating with his loud, raspy voice. I mean, good Lord. I... 
I know NBC does a better job, you know, when they were covering NASCAR races, but I feel like Jeff Burns is just one of those guys that tries too hard to be entertaining, um, while Dale Jr. is just more natural. Um, and Steve Letarte's actually growing on me as well. But anyways, enough talking to me about that, guys. Let's get back to the diecast because this thing is such a simple paint scheme. I like it, guys. The Cyclist sponsorship, of course, only lasted like for like three seasons, I think. So this was the debut of this. But um, this is the only year that they had the Super Guard sponsorship, um, which I guess is supposed to be their motor oil. I didn't even know Sitco had motor oil. But every time I think it's Sitco, I just think of those cheap uh, gas station, you know what I mean? Kind of like a quickie mark from The Simpsons, you know? <laughs> um, as you can tell, this car is very authentic because it does have Winston Cup Series and Budweiser logo. So, yeah, you got your cigarettes and, uh, you know, your your uh, your beer. So, that just shows you that this is not marketed for kids. But just, and we got ourselves, I think this is the only time we've had this type of font. This is a Roush font, guys, of the 99. This is before we had the days of Carl Edwards. But they... I don't know if this was like Sicko's plant or something, but just, I don't know, it's like very like, I don't know, like italized or jagged, but it looks really unique, guys. I mean, this is the only time I think Jeff Burton actually had this right here. We do got a tire locked up right here, so it looks like this car looks like it hasn't seen better days. kind of rolls, but it kind of looks like it's been sitting on the sun because you see where the tire is kind of flat right there. But um, time to get on to the best part now. Let's get on to the die cast uh you know uh disassembly guys just look at this man look at just how fully detailed this car is man you see you got the you know the engine block the radiator uh the fans um all the, all the old belts and whistles and all sorts of stuff right here you guys know what i'm trying to say i mean after all, i am a car i am an auto mechanic so i probably should know all these parts are but heck you know i could go in for details about that but you know um at the end of the day trying to make these reviews as entertaining as possible and not trying to make it look like a freaking uh you know uh tech class <laughs> like okay kids can you say what this is what's that <laughs> but it's really cool guys you get the little air hoses and you get the gear shift and the uh, look at this guys even the interior guys um if you guys didn't see like any of my other team caliper reviews and um you know i'm just pointing this out out, but many guys should probably know what all this stuff looks i mean just look at how detailed this is guys the this part is plastic but there are some parts where they look like it's metal guys but look at this even the bottom is fully detailed guys this is like what you see on a 124 elite scale guys and those things are like maybe like 100 or maybe 120 now or something like that who knows maybe 150 <laughs> i don't even want to know what they are at the track of the elite die cast but um see the differential and the exhaust pipes fuel filter just all sorts of cool stuff the transmission such cool detail guys i wish we had elite 164 scale die cast but i guess that's gonna be too much to ask and plus no one line now they'll probably introduce them and then they'll cheap them uh, they'll, they'll, they'll make them more cheaper as the years go on um that's just how it is with line now <laughs> but glad uh, this is what makes you know collecting older die cast so unique guys because you can look back and be like wow look at all the stuff we had back then um and detail at its finest is what team caliper did um i know they weren't really the best in like uh creating like you know the, the generic molds but on these owners elite scales Oh my God, they definitely live up to their name. Um, so yeah, guys, even uh, even like the smallest things you can even see. And look at that, even that's something you don't even see nowadays, guys. Even the 124 ARCs, the, the deck lit opening in the fuel filler neck just absolutely beautiful man and this is probably the only time you have team caliber that actually has you know freaking taillights because <laughs> the original die cast don't but it's just such a simple scheme but so unique and i don't know i feel like just they should just bring the scheme back just one of these years um but speaking of that guys we're doing side comparison of another sitco card that actually is not really sponsored by sitco but um you know one of my favorite drivers actually did uh, a throwback of uh of this car but um it's not a jeff burden throwback but this is ryan blaney's uh 2017 throwback which is a, th a, th a throwback to uh the uh, Wood Brothers Sitco card that was, uh, I believe, uh, it was driven by uh, Michael Waltrip in the 90s, but in the 80s, it was with Kyle Petty, and they had the Sitco sponsorship, so I thought this would be pretty cool, just show you guys, you know, the progress of the Sitco schemes. Um, my lord, guys, it, it's really cool. Um, and of course, you know, anybody who's IndyCar fans, well, you guys probably know the Sitco car from, uh, you know, uh, the, the the good old famous Milkaduno. Yeah, he, all I can say is, if you guys saw Danica Patrick was banned in NASCAR, oh boy, Milkaduno, and I think she ran a couple races in ARCA, too. She was just... All I'm going to say is look up uh, the fight between her and Danica Patrick um, on, in the pits, and you're going to have some entertaining content, let's just say it the least. <laughs> what the hell? It's not my fault. You're just slow. Exactly what Milko Duno is. Slow as shit. <laughs> but, you know, I had to point that out because, heck, every time I see Sitko, I just had to say something about Milko Duno. Um, 
my, my lord. Um, but yeah, I mean, as you can see, I mean, the color scheme is pretty much almost like it. I mean, you got the red, white, and blue, so how patriotic. <laughs> um, it, it, this is not even a patriotic car, but I can already say, you know, it's got definitely potential to be a cool patriotic car. But I don't know, guys. I mean, uh, if you guys have any other memories about the Sitco scheme, uh, whether it was, you know, with the Roush days or the Wood Brothers days, feel free to let me know, guys, because um, I really want to hear you guys' opinion. And of course, the Diecast review is also going out to my buddy Diecast Buffet, because, you know, heck, it, <laughs> as soon as I saw this car, I was like, hey, you know what? I probably should review it. I mean, he, I think he reviewed the 2002 car, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, and boy, the lighting's a little dark today. But um, yeah, feel free to comment below if you guys have anything else to say, as this is going to wrap up the Diecast review of Jeff Burden's 2001 uh, Sicko Superguard uh, Mortar Oil for Taurus for Roush Racing. Comment, yeah, like, subscribe, and this has been OBB. See you guys next time on another Diecast review. And uh, thank you guys for so much for watching for you guys' continuing support, and I'll see you guys next time back in the arena station very soon.